Lesson 4.6 is polynomial and rational inequalities. A number line value as we defined in 3.5 with the quadratic inequalities is any value that makes your function zero or undefined. So we're going to use a similar process that we did with the quadratic inequalities in 3.5 to now do higher order polynomials and rational functions. For the rational functions, make sure you never cancel any factors. We're going to get everything on one side of the inequality and then we're going to solve it. So first, we're going to graph this function f of x equals x plus 3 times x minus 1 20 squared, and then use our graph in order to answer these questions. So I have my graph here. Um, I have zeros of negative 3 and positive 1. Negative 3 is a multiplicity of 1, so it crosses. Positive 1 has a multiplicity of 2, so it touches. I have a 3-degree polynomial and a leading coefficient of 1, so as x goes to positive infinity, y is going to go to positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, y is going to go to negative infinity. And then my y-intercept is 3. So it's going to cross here, go through that y-intercept, bounce off, and head off to a positive infinity. So if we want where this thing is greater than 0, we want where it's strictly above the x-axis. So not including negative 3, all the way to 1, not included, and then 1 up to positive infinity. If we want where f of x is less than or equal to 0, we want where it's below or equal to the x-axis, so we want everything from negative infinity up to negative 3 included, because that's where it equals 0. But then because we want where it's equals 0, we also want to include x equals negative 1. For polynomial inequalities, we treat them exactly like we do the quadratic inequalities. We always want one side to equal 0, and then we're going to factor it completely. So this one, I factored out a GCF of x, and then I was left with x squared minus 2x minus 3, so then I factored that into x minus 3 times x plus 1. So now that it's factored completely, I'm going to find all the places that make the inequality equal to 0. So I have x equals 0, x equals 3, and x equals negative 1. And then just like our quadratic inequalities, we're going to put those on a number line. So I put all those on our number line here, and I put open circles because it was strictly greater than. And then now I'm going to test values in each of these intervals. So unlike the quadratic inequalities where we have at most three intervals, with higher order polynomials, you can have more intervals than that. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing we did before. I'm going to use this factored form, and I'm going to test values in each of these intervals to see whether the y-coordinates are positive or negative. So for my section less than negative 1, I chose negative 10. So plugging it into each of the three factors, negative 10 is negative. Negative 10 minus 3 is negative, and negative 10 plus 1 is also negative. So I have a negative times a negative times a negative, so therefore the whole thing is negative. For my number between negative 1 and 0, I chose negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 is negative. Negative 0.5 minus 3 is negative. Negative 0.5 plus 1 is positive. So negative times a negative ends up being positive. For a number between 0 and 3, I chose 1. 1 is positive. 1 minus 3 is negative. 1 plus 1 is positive. So I have an odd number of negatives, so the whole thing is negative. And then if I choose a number bigger than 3, then I, I chose 5. Um, all three sections are going to end up being positive, so I have my whole thing to be positive. So then, if I want where this thing is greater than 0, I want where my sections are positive. So I want this section here in between negative 1 and 0, and I want this section greater than 3. So then I can use that to write my interval notation for my final solution. So I want negative 1 to 0 not included, union 3 to infinity also not included. For the second one, we have the same idea. So we have x to the fourth, fourth is less than or equal to x. So same thing, we want to make one side equal to 0, factor it, and solve this with the number line. So first thing I did was I subtracted the x to the other side, so one side was equal to 0, so x to the fourth minus x. And then I factored out the GCF of an x, so I got x times x cubed minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. This is a difference of squares, excuse me, a difference of cubes. So I have x and 1, the two things that are being cubed, and then squared together squared, so x squared, x and 1, and then same sign, opposite sign, always positive, so negative, positive, positive. Um, so then what makes this thing equal to 0 would be x equals 0 and x equals 1. This thing has no real solutions, so there's nothing to put on the number line for that. So I made my number line. I have 0 and 1. So when I go to test values, this part here is always positive. No matter what I plug in for x, it will always end up being a positive number. So I don't really have to worry too much about it for our factors. So if I plug in something less than 0, x is going to be negative. x minus 1 is also going to be negative. And then this part is always positive. So I have a negative times a negative times a positive, so the whole thing is positive. If I plug in something between 0 and 1, like 0 0.5, 
I end up with a positive, a negative, and a positive. So positive, negative, positive, the whole thing is negative. And then if I plug in something bigger than 1, each of these sections is going to be positive, so then the whole thing is going to be positive. So if I want where this thing is less than or equal to 0, I have closed circles on my zeros. And then I want where it's less than, so I want where it's negative, so I want between 0 and 1 included. When we solve rational inequalities, we're going to follow the same process. We're going to make one side equal to 0. And that might mean we have to simplify a rational expression um, with adding or subtracting or something like that. Make sure it's one fraction. And then factor completely both the numerator and the denominator. Do not cancel any factors. And then every value that makes the function 0, so the numerator equal to 0, or undefined, the denominator equal 0, goes on our number line. And then we solve it with our number line, just like a polynomial inequality. So for this first one, I have 4x plus 5 over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 3 over and then simplify that rational expression. So first thing I did was I subtracted the 3 across, so I got 4x plus 5 over x plus 2 minus 3. 3 is really 3 over 1, so I need to make a common denominator, which means my denominator is just going to be x plus 2. Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do the same thing to the numerator. So my common denominator is x plus 2, and then I'm going to distribute the negative 3 in. So I get 4x plus 5 minus 3x minus 6. So then combine like terms, 4x minus 3x is x, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And then this is as simplified as I can go. So now I'm going to take anything that makes either the numerator equal to 0 or the denominator equal to 0 and put them on my number line. So now we have to decide whether we want open circles or closed circles. Our first thought is going to be we want closed circles because this is an or equal to. And that is partly true. The numerator can equal 0. So we do, in fact, want a closed circle at positive 1 because that makes the numerator equal to 0, which means that makes the entire function equal to 0. But the denominator, x can never equal negative 2. If we think about our graphs, that's actually a vertical asymptote. So because it makes the denominator 0, you can't actually achieve that value. So if it makes the denominator 0, it's always going to be an open circle, regardless of your or equal to. So now we're going to test points just like we did with our polynomials and decide what intervals we want. So if I pick a number less than negative 2, whatever, negative 10 minus 1 is negative, negative 10 minus plus 2 is also negative, so a negative divided by a negative is a positive. If I pick a number between negative 2 and 1, like 0, I end up with a negative divided by a positive, so I end up with a negative. And if I pick a number bigger than 1, I end up with a positive divided by a positive, so I end up with a positive. So if I want where this is greater than 0, I want my positive sections. So now I can write out my intervals. So for this interval, I want negative infinity up to negative 2 not included, so parenthesis, union 1 included up to infinity. So you have to be a little careful on these rational ones because you're not always going to be the same with your open circles or your closed circles. You're included or not included. We have another couple examples here. So x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus 12x squared over x squared plus 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. And 2x plus 5 over x plus 1 is less than x plus 1 over x minus 1. So we want to make sure one side is equal to 0. And then factor, simplify, factor completely, and then use our number lines to solve these inequalities. So for this first one, I factor an x squared GCF out of the numerator. So then I was left with x squared times x squared plus 7x plus 12 over x squared plus 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. And then the, this part here factored into x plus 3 times x plus 4, and the denominator factored into x plus 5 times x minus 1. So 0, negative 3, and negative 4 make the numerator equal to 0 and negative 5 and positive 1 make the denominator equal to 0. Because I want this or equal to, I want anything that makes the numerator equal to 0 to actually be included, so I put closed circles on those ones. Anything that makes the denominator equal to 0 can never equal 0. That's not possible. So those ones always have to be open circles. Give me this one. So then I'm going to test values. So if I plug in something less than negative 5, when I square it, it's always positive. And then negative, 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 negative. So I end up with four negatives, which makes the whole thing positive. If I pick something between negative 5 and negative 4, again, if I square it, it becomes positive. Negative 4.5 plus 3 is negative. Negative 4.5 plus 4 is negative. Negative 4.5 plus 5 is positive. Negative 4.5 minus 1 is negative. So three negatives, I end up with a negative. Something between negative 4 and negative 3, like three, negative 3 and a half, positive because you square it. Negative, positive, positive, negative. So I end up with two negatives, which makes the whole thing positive. Something between negative 3 and 0, like negative 1, positive because I squared it. Positive, 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 negative. 
So I have one negative, which makes the whole thing negative. If I pick something between 0 and 1, I actually end up with the same thing, um, like 0 0.5, positive, 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 negative. So 1 negative makes the whole thing negative. And if I pick something bigger than 1, every single factor is going to be positive. So then I want where this thing is greater than or equal to 0, so I want the positive sections. So I want negative infinity up to negative 5 not included, negative 4 to negative 3 both included. I want to include this 0 because I do want where this is equal to 0. So you can say either x equals 0 or you can say the interval from 0 to 0 and then 1 not included up to infinity. So now we have this next one, 2x plus 5 over x plus 1 is less than x plus 1 over x minus 1. So in this one I needed to subtract the x plus 1 x over x minus 1 over. And then I have a rational expression I need to simplify using a common denominator. So my common denominator is going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1. So the first fraction needed an x minus 1 over an x minus 1. The second one needed an x plus 1 over an x plus 1. So then I distributed everything out. I made sure I distributed the negative all the way through. Once I simplified, I got x squared plus x minus 6, which factors into x plus 3 times x minus 2. So what makes the numerator 0 is negative 3 and positive 2. What makes the denominator 0 is plus and minus 1. In this case, all of them are going to be open circles. Negative 3 and 2 are open circles because we want this to be strictly less than 0, so we don't want to include those. And then 1 and negative 1 are always open circles because they make the denominator 0. So then I tested values in each of these intervals. Um, everything less than negative 3, all 4 are going to be negative, which means it's positive. Between negative 3 and negative 1, uh, you get a positive, negative, 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 so 3 negatives make a negative. Between negative 1 and positive 1, you end up with 2 negatives, so you get a positive. Between 1 and 2, you end up with 1 negative, so the whole thing's negative. And then greater than 2, all four of them are positive, so you end up with a positive. Because we want where this is less than 0, we want the negative section, so from negative 3 to negative 1 not included, and 1 to 2 also not included. So polynomial and rational inequalities set one side equal to 0, simplify completely, factor completely. Anything that makes either a numerator or a denominator equal to 0 goes on your number line. Decide open circles or closed circles, test your intervals, and then decide what intervals you want.